Hey, this is Daniel Norton. I'm here in my studio in New York City with Paulina. Hi. And today we're going to play around a little bit with prisms. So I was, uh, I don't know, it might have been a month or so ago, uh, Vanessa Joy came by the studio. She needed a place with windows so she could mess around for an Instagram story that she was doing for Adorama. I think we can put a link. I'll put it in the description at the very least. Super fun. She puts it in front of the lens. But we just started talking because she had a prism and she was like, oh, you know, I'm going to shoot through it to... to uh, to get reflections, blah, blah, and you can also throw rainbows with it. And I was like, you know, I have a, a prism. I actually have one in my kitchen. That's what I told her. I have a little one in my kitchen. And I love that like I walk in there and I see rainbows on the wall and stuff, but I always feel like I wouldn't use one because it's not predictable enough and I'm very much like a gotta set it up shot. So then I said, well, let me do it myself, right? So I did a bunch of experimentation to see kind of what would be the ideal way to kind of create an image with consistent rainbow using a prism. We messed around with various different types of lights. Okay, so let's take a second to talk about what a prism is. I mean, essentially, it's a triangle. It's usually either glass or plastic, right? You can get these things uh, inexpensively. And as your light kind of comes into it, you know, light is made up of all these different colors that creates white light. So as all this light hits the prism, it kind of goes through the glass or plastic at kind of a different speed, um, kind of, right? And, and it breaks up into, into your, your various colors, right? You've got your red, your orange, whatever, and you create a nice rainbow coming through it. So. It's simple as that. Um, we just want to throw light through the, through the uh, prism and it will kick out the other side a rainbow. You may notice, by the way, that even though my subject is over there and my prism is over here, it's kind of like, it's not pointed right at them and that's because you'll see the light's actually gonna come out of the side of the prism. It's really interesting. So you think about that when you're setting up your, your position. Uh, I have my uh, DLED 7 here, which is just an LED um, light from Data Light. And I'm basically just pointing it. I'm, I've got the, by the way, I just put this on top of a, uh, a baby plate that was just flipped upside down, just so I have a nice flat place to put it. You could, I probably wouldn't recommend for this type of situation holding it in your hand, because again, the whole point here is, of this thing is to get, the whole point of this exercise is to get it as precise as possible, so we don't want to be anything to move. All right, so there you can see it right there on my subject. Okay, but I have all these overhead lights in here, uh, which is making, so you can see me. Let me kill those so we can actually get a full effect. Okay, so the lights are off. We can see we have nice saturation here. So let's take a shot. I'm just using the meter in my camera. Um, we're at uh, about a 60th of a second at f4. It looks good. You know, remember that your exposure is gonna control your saturation. You see we have nice, beautiful saturation here. The only downside to this is that we're not getting any light kind of on the non-rainbowy part of the face, right? So we can use some kind of reflector for that if we want. There is like a little bit of light bouncing around in the space. Right? I mean, if I come over here and I drag my exposure slider up, it doesn't take much to start to bring that up over here. And that's just because I have white walls. If you had a, an issue with light bouncing around, you could use a flag or something to block it. But I don't think we have to worry about that right now. What I'm going to do is actually bring in a reflector. So this guy is just a silver reflector. You know, and again, the idea here is that we want to throw some light on the subject to bring up the, and I don't want to block it, so it's all about getting, yeah. And you can see the saturation is dropping. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm actually gonna turn her face a little bit this way. Just so we can see this better, right? Move the reflector in. Get nice light on there. And let's see what we get. Again, the trick here, because I'm using the single light, is to not block it. Same exposure. Yeah, and we can see now that we've got some light there. That's basically no kickback. And there we have some fill. So you can get away with using one light here if you want. Um, I think in the end, if you're gonna make an actual portrait, you're probably going to wanna use multiple lights. But beyond, before we get into that, I think the next step here is I'm going to try to do this with the flash. Okay, so really to have full control here, right, the thing I really want is I want to use flash. Because this way I can do my prism rainbow effect anywhere for the most part, as long as I can, you know, more or less knock the light down, which with a powerful studio flash I can do. So I have my B1X here. I've got it, uh, the prism setup. It's kind of the same setup where I have the prism sitting on top of the baby plate. I'm aiming the light at it. There's a few different variations here, though. Number one it's much harder to figure out exactly where the light's gonna fall with the flash because even though you have a modeling light, 
The modeling light is not the flash tube, right? It's not exactly in the same spot. So it is gonna be slightly different. So a lot of this is gonna be a bit of experimentation. What I found worked pretty well is you kind of get into position where you think it's gonna be and you pop the flash multiple times and you can kind of see where it's falling. You know, use the modeling light to get it close, pop the flash to adjust or do a couple of test shots to move it. The other thing is, especially with my light, these studio flashes are designed to throw the light really wide, right? So if I take this, right now I have the, the rainbow pointed at her, everything looks fantastic. And if I take my, uh, my flash and I take a shot here, you know, I've got the prism all set up, like all cool, go like that. And looks like we didn't do anything, right? It's basically lights everywhere. We need to control the spill of light. There's a lot of different ways we can do that. The, the preferred way, the simplest way really, is to use a grid. So I have my five degree grid uh, on my Profoto now. I'm gonna put that on. You know, make sure if you're gonna use a grid and stuff like that, that you do all the lining up and stuff that I talked about a second ago with the grid on there, right? That's the, you wanna make sure everything's in place before you do it. Um, I wanna make sure I'm not blocking the light as well. So uh, it might be a good idea to put the modeling light on. When we take the shot now, we can see we've got this nice rainbow and now guys, I'm shooting at 200th of a second, F8, so I'm killing all the light in the space. But you might be saying, but well, I can see there's like white light over here, Daniel. Yeah, that's because this light is bouncing off the wall. I have a big white studio, right? So in, what I'm gonna do over here is I'm gonna block that light, right? You know, the way that you flag stuff really depends on what you're flagging. Sometimes you wanna put the flag close to the light source. Sometimes you wanna put it close to the, to the subject. In this case, I think close to the subject is the best way to do it. Um, you certainly could put it over here as well. But I feel like with this light, it may end up bouncing too much around, even if I do that. There we go. So now I'm in total control. So if I want that colorful light on her face and I don't want any of the ambient light or any of the bounce light, I should say from my flash to hit her, this is the way to do it. I have both options available to me. And again, this gives me total control. Okay, so in the end, we were able to get a really pretty decently controlled shot using the flash, which of course is gonna be my preference. You know, using the sun, using constant lights, if that's what you got, or even like a flashlight through a prism would be cool and you can get a lot of cool effects, but using the flash gives me power, gives me control. So I've got my B1X set up, I have the grid on it, it's shooting through the prism, giving us a nice uh, a rainbow, and now I have a much nicer model. <laughs> so let's see, let's, let's get that set up, guys. All right, so we're basically set up here. I'm gonna turn, I'm at 200th of a second, F8, ISO 100. I'm going to just turn on the modeling light on the light with the prism so that Paulina can see it. Are you able to see it or are we going to kill the lights in the space? Well, we have to kill the lights in the space. Yeah, you can see it. Okay. You know, work with your model. Let them know kind of how to do it. You know, that that's the key here. I find a lot of photographers don't communicate and then they just, they're like, I can't get the person to do something. It's like, yeah, exactly. It's like, let them see it. So this is just the rainbow. Um, I'm in manual because I don't want it to bounce around. Cool, yeah, so you know, we have the exposure here. You know, how, the expo how you achieve the exposure. I actually used TTL to get this set at first. It worked pretty fine. You know, we've got a decent exposure here. You can dial your, your uh, light up or down to get it where you want, but that's actually pretty darn good. Um, but of course, this in and of itself is just a rainbow in the darkness. A rainbow in the darkness. We all need that, right? It's not that interesting, right? So we wanna build a shot of this and make something really a little bit kind of more elaborate, a little more creative. So the first thing I'm seeing is, again, a lot of darkness, I wanna separate her. So I'm actually gonna do a, a couple of lights from the back to kind of cut her out. And I decided to use two different ones because I. I feel like if you use always the exact same lights uh, from the back to give your cutout lights or whatever, they can look a little more commercial or whatever. So a lot of times when I'm trying something funky, I'll mix it up a little bit. So I have a beauty dish with the grid on one side to give a little bit more of a specular, punchy, contrasty light. And then on the other side, I have a small softbox. Actually, it's an extra small softbox at that. Um, and that's gonna give me a, a more of a softer, diffuse light. So that'll be our two cutout lights, if you will. I'm gonna turn those on. That's B and C. And Good, so let's see what that looks like. So again, we have the rainbow. You know, enough of that light is, is wrapping around her that we're getting separation on the face, giving good look to the face, because if we just look at this one, you know, we're not seeing the sides of her, her cheekbones or anything. So this gives us enough to work with. We can move around her position within the light. Um, and all that does look pretty good. But one thing I want to do now to give a little bit more control or for, for Pauline to make it a little easier is I'm gonna kill the overhead lights. So that way we can see this a little better. Yeah. Okay. That makes it a lot easier. Yeah. It's harder for you guys to see, but easier for her. Okay. Come a little bit this way. Good. Perfect. Yeah. 
And now we can see we can really kind of control where that rainbow falls. So let's shoot a couple like this. You know, and like before, guys, I could bounce back some of this light if I want fill. There's a lot of different things you can do, but just giving some room to move is nice. Good. Cool. And all that's nice, right? And you would think I'd be happy with that, but not if you know me at all. <laughs> I got to add one more light, right? Because I feel like it's cool and she's separated from the background, but it's just a cool shot of somebody with a rainbow light and whatever. Like, I want to create a scene, a feel, a vibe. So what I have over here is my data light, a DLED 7 fitted with a projection attachment. And in that projection attachment, I have what they call a, uh, a breakup. And, you know, it can be sharp like that if you want to be like blah, blah, blah. But we're going to make it really out of focus in nebulous. Nebulous? You like that, right? Um, and I actually have it set to tungsten white balance. This is a dual, uh, dual color light. Now, the only issue here is in order, if I shoot at 200th of a second at f8, like I'm doing, right? Yeah, that doesn't do anything, did it? That's a little disappointing. All right, so we need to drag the shutter for that, right? So I'm going to go into my camera, and I'm going to dial down to, I'm just going to look through the camera, and I'm going to dial it down to where I think it looks pretty good. Uh, let's say an eighth of a second, and let's shoot that. Okay. Yeah, pretty good, right? One eighth of a second, right? ISO 100, F8, you see that it's nice and sharp. Why is it sharp even at an eighth of a second? Because Daniel has amazing uh, steady hands. Probably not. No, it's because none of this like constant light really is hitting her. There is a little constant light hitting her from the modeling light of the, the flash, but it's not enough to make a difference. If I want to be extra, extra perfect, I'll turn that one off. So what I'll do is I can control that from my camera. So I'm going to get uh, pulling into a position that, that we're good. I'm going to focus and get it nice and tight. Then I'm going to turn off that modeling light. Uh, so I'm going to hit the A group. And there we go. Good. Now I'm not turning off the flash, I'm just turning off the modeling light. Good, focusing. I can turn it on so I can focus and see. Turn it off, shoot. Right, there we go. It's not terrible, it's gonna be hard to get the, because your arm is getting white light as well. So if you wanna do that, you have to just, uh, you can turn, but then just kind of turn your shoulder back towards the light a bit. You know, the shoulder this way, like open up a little bit. Just have to cheat it a bit, basically. Yep, there we go. There we go. I'm holding light on. So is it very quick? Uh, let's see. Uh, yep, there we go. Yep, perfect. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> you get a little bit of the crease pass too over here, which is kind of cool. But yeah, see, we can actually control. You know, we're just working together to get the, the rainbow where we want it. Do one like really straight on. I want to do like a powerful straight on shot. So again, I'm going to turn the model light on for a second. Just going to get into position. Right there, I'm going to focus. Turn the model light off and fire. You know, nice and simple, really easy, guys. It, it sure takes a second to do that, but that gives us a lot more control, you know, and we don't have to worry about uh, any blur. So. Good. On, that looks right there, good. Right there, off, okay, on. I'm not, I'm not gonna bother turning it off because I don't think I'm getting any blur. Let's just shoot a few and we'll see if that's the case. Focusing, good. Good, hold, sorry, good. Good. Right there, hold, good, nice. So we're just playing with different effects with the rainbow on the face. It's really cool because it almost looks, like we were saying earlier, almost like paint on the body. We'll try to work towards the, the basically camera right, so your left, yeah, your face. So I get a little more color on the front of your face, yeah. Good like that. Good, good, good. Nice. Yeah, these are super fun. And there we go. We can do this, you know, all day long, right? Getting whatever color we want. And, you know, just as one final thing, 
because you know I like to change things up in the middle of the shoot. I'm gonna turn off my two kicker lights and I'm just gonna do the front light and the background light. So just straight at me, like almost like a beauty shot. Yeah, exactly. Let me see what that looks like. It's curious if she falls into, also kind of different and interesting, but not enough. Because as we all know, the more lights you use, the better it is. Okay, here we go. Blink, good. Good. Nice. Yeah, it's beautiful. So cool. <laughs> It's like it's good, like a little right just on the tip of your nose is blue, like you perfectly line that up. That's a, that's called perfectly lining up with the, with the rainbow. That's an expert right there. Ten points for that one. <laughs> I love it. You know, actually, do something where you put your hand forward. Yeah, like look look off of this way with your face more, so I get some of the background light. Um, I want you to block the rainbow basically. Okay. Yeah, but then turn your face slightly to your left. I think then we'll get some of that background light. I'm just curious. It might be too bright when you do that. No, it worked. Cool. Right, so she's blocking the rainbow. The reason why I had her turn, guys, is so this background light would light her up, otherwise she'd be too dark. But now you got rainbow hand. Nice. All right, one more. We always have to end with a good one. I'm gonna do a horizontal, because you know we like that. Good, good, good. Focusing. Okay. I'm gonna frame, frame myself up. That's beautiful. Cool. Let's see what that looks like. Oh yeah, a couple more like that. Actually, I'm gonna, for some reason, horizontal, I want the background to be brighter. So I'm gonna go down to, I think, a quarter of a second. We'll go half a second. Try one more like that, horizontal. Good. That should give us a much brighter background. Oh yeah, and this one I'm gonna kill the modeling light though when we do it. So I'll get you in position and I'll kill the modeling light. Hold on, A, good. Good, one more. Focused, good. Good, focusing, good, killing it, good. Nice, oh yeah, super cool. Yeah, just because with the longer exposure, I was nervous about the modeling light, and then there you go, you know, half a second, still sharp as can be. Sharp and shiny. It's like you're in this bizarre rainbow world. Yeah. Love it. Super, super good. Okay, so we did it, right? That was awesome. Yeah, it's like when you see something out there, you know, uh, like techniques or trendy things that people are doing, you play with them. I think that you can have a lot of fun with it, but you know, try to make them work with your style. You don't have to change the way that you shoot to use things that are going on that are, you know, that, that people use, like techniques. For me, I like to light with flash. I like to have more control. So if I want to do the prismy thing, that's how I do it, right? I'm going to use flash. It just took me a little time to figure out exactly what works best. And I was able to, in the end, create the shot I want. And all day long, we can shoot this, and it won't matter if it's sunny. If it's the middle of the winter, if it's the summer, if it's raining out, I mean, who cares? I can make a rainbow anytime I want by doing this. And now I'm tempted to go out and buy a bunch more of these prisms and call, throw rainbows everywhere. So you may see another future bizarre rainbow shot. But um, anyways, I will put uh, Paulina's information in the description. Uh, be sure to follow me, of course, Daniel Martin Photographer. Subscribe to Adorama TV and ring the bell so you get all the notifications. And I'll see you next time on set.